Well, how is deep fascia structured? It's kind of regular. So if superficial fascia and perifascia get placed into the category of loose areolar connective tissue by most anatomists, deep fascia gets placed into the category of dense, regular, fibrous fascia. So we kind of divide them up into loose and dense. Well, here's the dense one. But there's a great variety of ways in which the human body structures itself and builds its deep fascia. So it's kind of a continuum of fiber organization. A continuum in what way? Let's look at it. So one is how close are the fibers to one another? So do we have thick fibers that are very close to each other? That's one option. Do we have thick fibers that are more spaced out? Do we have thinner fibers rather than thicker fibers that are kind of close to each other? Thinner fibers. Maybe the thinner fibers are more spaced out. So what we can have is a continuum of fiber thickness and the spaciousness between the fibers that are regularly lined up between each other. So continuum of thickness, continuum of closeness to each other. Now we can take these organizations and stack them. So we can take uh, dense fibers and, sorry, we can take dense fibers and we can cross them with other dense fibers and make a tight grid. We can take dense fibers and we can cross them with thinner fibers that are more spaciously organized. We can do pretty much any combination of the above. Thin fibers, spaciously organized. Thin fibers, more closely organized. And then stacked in layers. How many layers? I've often seen three. I often see two. And sometimes I see single layers of stranded fibers. For instance, the transversalis fascia down low in the belly wall. Single fibers, kind of spacious, with a membranous tissue in which they're embedded. Somewhere in the thigh, in the IT band, we'll see thick fibers organized this way, but then crossed with thinner fibers. In the arm, we'll find uh, a double layer of thin fibers. So the structure of deep fascia, folks, is, is variable based on the thickness of the fiber, the spaciousness between the fibers, and how many layers of those fibers are stacked on top of each other in regular arrays. I think that's pretty cool. And as you wander around the body, and people say, oh, you know, fascia is plastic, it can change. Well, it can change. How? The deep fascia can change because when you do things, right, you can increase the thickness of the fibers. You can, and when you disuse your body, you, you might have thinner fibers that are comprising the different fascia, the different deep fascia, the different deep, dense, regular fascia of the body. But what I don't see from one person to another is a tremendous variation in the patterning in different areas of the body. It's kind of predictable. Human anatomy allows me, I've seen enough of it that I can kind of predict the patterning I'm going to find in the IT band, the patterning I'm going to find in the anterior rectus sheath, the patterning, patterning I'm going to find over the xiphoid process, right? Each pattern is somewhat predictable, but also somewhat different. I'll go into fiber angles maybe in another video, but for now, suffice it to say that the structure of, of deep fascia is that of dense, regular collagen fibers organized in patterns uh, and varying in fiber thickness and, uh, and fiber uh, proximity and the number of layers of those fibers in those forms of organization. Cool, right?
If you'd like to learn more, visit me at gilhadley.com. There's a ton of stuff there. Enjoy.